welcome back. So, I am starting out with a 20 ounce straight from the Glitter Ranch. Um, I'm doing straight because I'm going to do a full vinyl wrap, so it's a heck of a lot easier to do that when you have a, you know, just a straight line to go down. Um, I am going to be using just a plain teal vinyl, so it's not crucial that I get it straight, but I just always try to do a straight, you know, uh, wrap just because it makes life a little bit easier. So I got this teal vinyl at Tuesday morning. Um, it's really not important about the vinyl itself. I'm going to be showing you all two different types of ways to do full vinyl wrap and then add a V split, but to do it really super easy and fast. Um, this is what I did the other day. I needed to make a cup really quickly and this was the way I did it and it really I really love the way that it the results the way that it came out so I hope it uh, works for you guys as well so um I got we got my sister a Zach Posen bag for her birthday and once we finally found it I had to kind of make a cup really quickly to match it well I wanted to not that I had to but I wanted to and so I really liked this teal color it really matched the teal from the picture in person it was a little different but in the picture it really matched so I was just going off of that because we had to order it so I didn't want to have to wait to paint it and then like worry about messing up the paint um, drips or whatever and so I was just like I'm just gonna wrap this in this color because it matches and it's just vinyl so it just wrap it around and you're done you don't have to wait for anything to dry nothing to cure or nothing so um I really like this idea you know it was just kind of I'm just gonna see if I can do this and if it works out then you know I'll film it and I'll post it on my channel so you can see from the very beginning um when I opened up there was like the where the paper and the tape was it kind of like gave it an imprint so I unrolled it all the way to the back side of the roll and used that because I I didn't want there to be any impressions whatsoever because I wasn't exactly sure where that was going to come out at it if it was going to have anything um you know if it was going to show on so I wanted it to be a clean clear uh surface that we were working on so that little contraption there I got from Cami Page boutique and it is it helps you kind of get your vinyl straight or not kind of but it helps you get your vinyl straight and so I was going to see if I could use it in this particular instance and I before this I cut it out because I want, didn't want this thing to be like an hour long but I tried like 14 different times to get this thing to go on there so I actually put that on there and it seemed to work really well because once I did that and I got then I started rolling the vinyl over the cup. I kept it in line. It was straight and it was perfect. So I definitely would suggest if you got one of these that you might, um, you could try it for, for definitely applying a, like a vinyl decal. But this would, this also helped me as well. So there you go. I'll put the link down below. And I just pressed down really good on that um, edge there. And then I went over and sliced it very slowly to get all that excess vinyl off um, you know you just don't want it to have like a, a ridge in there because I was going to be putting vinyl stripes like pinstripes over this but I still you still want it to be somewhat as clean as possible so then I went underneath and got that little piece of vinyl that was underneath as well so that we could have a clean and clear line going all the way down so um, I did take my heat gun later and um, heated that up just a little bit to kind of get it straight and it worked out perfect so I have to thank Mallory um, with Made by Manny and Mal and Dixie Darlins I think they both do this but I watched them religiously and I was like you know what I keep seeing them do this and I need to try it and I'll tell you what I will never not do it again. <laughs> it is so much easier. I just take the heat gun, heat up that vinyl, and it just basically like, it just gives you enough heat to where you can kind of stretch it over. And it just makes it stick so much better over that ridge. 
I, I just, I was like, why have I not done this before? Why, why is, why am I just finding out about this? Not that I'm just finding out, but why am I just now trying this? So I would definitely suggest you try it because it was like, you know, in the Tumblr world, it was life changing. So I, you just do have to be careful because it is hot. So don't just go grabbing it, you know, you know, test it out, make sure you can hold it, you know, if it's too hot or whatever, but, um, you just kind of keep like I'm doing here. I just kind of kept heating it up and just pulling and, and tightening and it did not move. And I always have a problem with this, like pulling up and like doing all that rigidy stuff that it, you see right there, it will do that on the sides. And once I put epoxy on there, and then I just have a big old mess on the bottom. And so this was very, very helpful. So I suggest that you try it next time. Um, it will save you a big headache, I promise. And since I had such good success with the bottom and working that way, I decided that I would try the heat gun at that little spot right there and it went down flat. Perfect. It was great. I also did the ridge, although, I mean the rim, although I, I, when I wrapped it around, I didn't do it as far down. I just kind of left like the little space there so that the epoxy could have something to grip onto, but I, it did have a little bit of rippling. And so all I did was just touch it with the heat gun and boom, it was good to go. So this is definitely my best advice to you. Thank you, Mallory. Thank you, Kelly with Dixie Darlings. And, um, you know, I'll keep watching. So then once I was done with that, I just took my razor blade here and just went around the edge and cut out that excess and it was perfect. The, the vinyl never moved. It stayed where it was over the edge like that. And it was just, anyways, I'll stop gushing over it. But I'm telling you, you got to try it. It was very cool. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to get very non-technical, but technical. I don't even know how do you want to describe it, but I, this is about the only measuring that I did because um, I had this scrap piece of this floral vinyl that I used from like a split design from like a year ago. Um, and I think it's available at the Vinyl Cottage. And so I was like, I need to see, um, you know, how how far around I'm going to go. And so that's basically what I did. I just just got the circumference of the tumbler and just went from there. So I just, I didn't want to use, you know, all of it if I didn't have to, and I didn't want to have just a bunch of excess vinyl. So that's why I measured it and just cut that off. And the vinyl cottage has these, these white stripes on the side. So I was just cutting those off because I didn't want to have to deal with, um, slicing anything on the tumbler because I'm going to put this straight over the vinyl and I didn't want to have any kind of problems going forward. I was just going to cut this and go for it. So I just took this and folded it in half. And I mean, not like precisely, but just kind of basically folded it in half. And then I took one side of the corner and I went all the way down to the bottom end of the front corner, right? If that makes sense, you saw what I did. And that was all I was going to do. I was like, you know, it doesn't really matter because we're going to wrap, I'm going to wrap pinstripes on there anyway. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be exact or measured perfectly or anything like that. So I just kind of trimmed it up a little bit just to make it somewhat straight, but I wasn't too worried about it being um, crazy, you know, perfectly straight or anything like that. But it did kind of have a little bit of a bow to it. So I just kind of you know, it kind of bowed out a little bit. So I just kind of trimmed that off so that it would have more of a straight line. And that's it. And then after that, I just measured it again and started my application of this vinyl. And basically because I had wrapped it around and measured from one, you know, point to the other, it was basically the backside where that line went down all the way. So I just started with one point and applied it. And then, um, I had a little bit, it was a little bit off. So I just peeled it right back up and it was perfectly fine and did not do anything to the vinyl underneath. Um, so I just applied it back to, and I wanted to get it straight so that it was on the same line as the top was 
you know, where there was like an opening for the epoxy to attach onto that stainless steel. So I just was like, okay, let me go back and do this a little more straight. And once I did it the, the second time, I pretty much had it and I just wrapped it around and that was it. That was my split design. And then the next, I'm going to just apply some really thick pen stripes because I wanted to mimic the purse has like these big gold pieces on there. And so that's why I went in with like really big kind of brushed gold vinyl that I had. And of course you want to pop any bubbles or straighten it out or, you know, you know, push those out or whatever at the end. So I took these, um, stripes. You can see the, these print stripes are much wider than like I would normally do, but I wanted to have that kind of big look because that was the way that the purse was with the gold. But, um, also I knew that I wanted to kind of cover up. I just wanted to make sure we were covering up as much of the line, um, as possible. So that was kind of my, it was kind of a purposefully done, um, thicker stripe in this instance. And like, I mean, you would do any other normal, um, this showed a little bit of the vinyl underneath, like the little bit of the, you know, edge of the vinyl, just a tad. Um, I don't know that if you really weren't looking for it, you couldn't tell, but I, if you had a problem with that and you did not want to do that, then you could easily put a coat of epoxy and then do your pinstripes. But like I was saying, I wanted this done in one day and I wanted to be able to put epoxy on it and get it cured and ready to go before Saturday. So this is why I went a little bit um, faster, a little skipped a couple of steps, but everything turned out absolutely gorgeous in the end. So I was perfectly fine with the ending um, look. So I ended up adding um, the pinstripe on the other side, obviously, uh, wrapped it around. It took me a little bit more to do it, probably because it wasn't exactly measured perfectly, but you could never tell. You would never be able to tell, I promise, <laughs> unless you took a measuring tape out and measured it yourself. But um, this would probably be the only downfall, maybe, is that it was a little bit more difficult to get that thing to kind of wrap around. But once I did... It was perfectly fine. You could never, you would never even know. So I did um, vinyl stripes on the both sides of the V going up and down in the front from the back to the front. And then I took another strap stripe and put it on the top because I wanted it to have this like golden metal finishings basically because that's how the purse was so I wanted the top to have that kind of look as well so I put those on first and then did the um the wraparound I always seem to do that I don't know if it's better or worse but that's how I do it and then I also did a stripe down the back side and then I covered the whole entire cup in Mod Podge and I should not have used this paintbrush. It had um, fuzzies on there. And I don't know why, why I was like, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> why did I use this cup? But I ended up, it was okay. Nothing was on there. But uh, I mean, this paintbrush, but it, it was okay. Nothing, nothing happened. But, uh, but anyways, I was just going to say is that to cover this entirely in Mod Podge will help, you know, keep it from the epoxy repelling or anything like that because your hands were all over this and um, I do this every single time all the time with Mod Podge so don't be afraid to cover this thing in Mod Podge uh, <clears throat> it's easy to do quick and easy cover it let it dry for about 30 45 minutes and then put epoxy on it also the um, epoxy I mean the uh, Mod Podge will kind of repel um, in the beginning, but then it will, if you just keep going over it and over it and over it and over it, it will, um, eventually start to kind of dry and the Mod Podge will work over it fine. It just, you just kind of have to kind of work it and work it and work it and work it and then it'll be fine, but you'll see it eventually will stop doing that repelling thing, but it's way better than for you to do this and have to work on this than it is to have to deal with epoxy. So this is going to be a quick little added Thing. Now, I did this for the January challenge for um, 
made by Manny and Mal Elite Group. It's her Patreon group. And I found these colors. I found this floral and I found this teal and I was like it matched exactly with the color palette that she had challenged us with this and I was like I wanted to do something a, like an opposite of version of what I had just done with the wrapping of the teal with the the plain and then doing the floral on the top so this one I wanted to do the floral underneath as the full wrap and then do a full a plain, a, you know, just a, a solid color on the top as the V part. So obviously you know how to do a wrap. I just showed you one. You, I'm, I've had a lot of wrapping on this channel. I just wanted to show you that I did the same thing with the heating of the bottom and it worked out so perfectly. It was just amazing, but I wanted that full look like if it was painted or something, you know, like that. I just wanted it to have that full wrapped look on the bottom as well. I think in these instances, this is very important to finish out the look on the bottom is to have that design go all the way around the bottom. And once again, this is just a strap, a scrap piece of vinyl that I had in the drawer. And I was like, it, it will go, the colors go really well. They go with the, the challenge. And so I was like, you know what? And it's kind of a sparkly frosted vinyl. And so I said, you know what? It'll work out perfectly fine. So I did, um, not really, I didn't really measure this because it was just basically, it went all the way around into the bottom. So, um, I thought I could just go ahead and fold this in half and then cut it like that. And, um, and that was it. And I trimmed it up just a little bit. I might've trimmed it up a little bit too much, but it was okay. We got it fixed. I, I will show you here in a minute um, how I fixed it in the end. So <clears throat> I just got a little bit of bow pieces. Now, if you would were to do this with like a paper cutter, it probably would have come out a little bit better. But um, but really, it's honestly as easy as that. It really was not that bad. Um, I just ended up kind of cutting and slicing, cutting and cutting and cutting until I cut it just a little bit too thin on the back side, but I ended up taking some of those pieces that I cut and fixed it up. And I just took those corners there and lined it up with the seam. And then I tried to get it as straight as possible on the top side. So um, <clears throat> we could still have that exposure uh, of the rim on the top. But once I got it on there and got it straight, I just removed the backing and then just kind of slid it over the, you know, over and, and got it on there and it worked out perfectly fine. Um, this was so easy. <laughs> it was so easy. And I see so many split cups and people are like measuring and doing all of these things. And I was like, what if I just cut this down the middle here and just slapped it on here? And, um, it worked out perfect. Now I completely respect and understand the whole measuring and get being exactly accurate and everything. But, um, this just worked for me. I needed it done quick and fast. So I took a little piece of the uh, vinyl there and just kind of put a piece um, to where it would go all the way to the edge. And then I was going to put the those big thick stripes of, you know, pin stripes on there. So I was like, this will probably cover it up. But um, and it worked out perfectly fine. So I my little screw up ended up being no problem at all. So I just kind of trimmed it down a little bit there. And then, um, <clears throat> and then when I put the uh, pinstripe on there, um, it covered it right up. So it was no big deal. So I'm using this Dollar Tree rose gold glitter, um, vinyl that I've got. <clears throat> and I'm, I just love this stuff. The only thing is, is that it's a little bit flimsy. So if you start pulling on it a little bit too much, it will stretch and break. But other than that, if you treat it, if you treat it very gently, it will, it works out perfectly fine. And it is so pretty. It just really adds something. And I thought that this color would really kind of bring out a little bit of the oranges and that kind of thing of those flowers. So this is why I've decided that I would, I would use this and, you know, it just like kind of like my last week's video was like, just use what you have, you know, don't go trying to buy a whole bunch of stuff. Just go start searching around and being like, you know what? This matches this and this matches that and this matches this. <laughs> 
anyways, so I then I decided that um, I didn't like just that it was just a plain, you know, just that teal was just like there was nothing there. And so I thought about, you know, maybe I could put a name, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. Well, I, I decided, you know what, I'll just go with the spring kind of, I'll go into spring here and um, I'll print out something from Creative Fabrica. So I found this um, Live Life in Full Bloom. Now I did put Mod Podge over this before I put this printable vinyl on because I have used this vinyl before and I have tried to put printable vinyl on it and it does not stick to it. So I went ahead and did Mod Podge all over it and then put that printable vinyl on top of it and it worked out fine it, it did not come up at all so um, that's just a little tip if you have this vinyl or if you have something that doesn't stick all that well just slap some Mod Podge on there and after that after the Mod Podge was on both you know and I put all the things on there that was it I covered this in like three coats of epoxy so it was like one in the morning one at night one in the morning one at night and then it was ready to go by Saturday and um, it turned out perfect and so the purse was a little bit greener than this teal but the the look and the kind of feel of it was really really cool and it just went so well with the look of you know what I was what I was going for and what I needed and if you have not joined made by Manny and Mal's elite group. I suggest you do it now. It is so much fun in there. This challenge was so fun. And um, if you recreate any of this, please join my group, tag me in it. Let me know what you think. Comment down below, all of that. And I'll see you next time.